Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. Today I am cooking from the Skinny Taste Fast and Slow book. And this is the author, Gina Homolka. And today I'm making something called pasta e fagioli. So a pasta and bean soup, basically. And she puts this in the quick category. Um, I'm doing things in kind of a funny order because I'm not serving dinner right now. So I'll, I'll talk about the differences. I'm also making a double batch for my family and a single batch for someone else's. So that single batch is in process and I have just started some of the sauteing on this one. So here, I've got some carrots, onions, celery, and garlic, which now that I have learned that you can saute without oil, I'm totally doing that because why not? So this is sauteing in some water, so steaming in some water, and I'm gonna let those onions become a bit translucent. So that is gonna do its thing. This one over here, I can show you, is already in its final stages. So it has the broth, the tomato sauce, the bean kind of liquid, which I'm gonna talk you through as well. And there's hamburger in this one, which is not in the original recipe, but we're cooking for some friends who have some family who um, are definitely not gonna go vegetarian, so we are going to accommodate that. And actually, I'm using hamburger because I have a ton of it, but ground sausage would be so good in here. Chicken sausage, probably chicken thighs. Um, but we're gonna use hamburger because we have a lot of it. So over here, what I have going, I have a double batch. So this is a large can of cannellini beans, rinsed, and then a full can of water. So I just like dump that beans in here, dump the water in, and this is gonna get made into a puree, which is gonna thicken the soup just a little bit, and it's gonna add that bean protein. So if you weren't utilizing meat, you are hiding all that protein, but super tasty. So this is gonna go on, and you're just chopping those up so they don't, this is a high speed blender. You don't have to go all the way, just enough to get the beans done. And then that's ready to go. I can also, while I'm waiting for that saute to happen, it's three and a half cups of broth. So I think that's right, is that right? Yeah. So for me, that's gonna be seven cups of broth. So I can at least prep a little bit of the water that I'm gonna need. Um, also, so later on when we go ahead and serve, it's some chopped basil on top. You can also put the basil in while you're cooking, but I've actually used a dry basil for the cooking. Um, I'm just gonna put the chopped basil on top. And also some fresh Parmesan for serving. So I grated this myself, and she calls for putting a Parmesan rind in the, um, in the base while you're kind of getting at it already. I never have a Parmesan rind, so I will just put a little bit of Parmesan. Um, she also suggests you take that rind out before you eat, so I won't have to do that. Um, so that is there. And this one, like I said, is pretty much done, so I want to keep a good eye on it. I was just letting those flavors meld a little bit. Uh, when you do this, I so it calls for finely chopped vegetables. And so I really did go ahead and take the time to dice all my veggies. We, for those of you who will like see this much later, we're in like this coronavirus lockdown. So I do not mind taking the time to saute my vegetables by hand. But on a busier day, you could throw them in a food processor and just give it a few pulses and you would be good to go. Um, also when it comes to, once you get those veggies soft, it's like a 15 minute boil. Uh, and then you cook the pasta in it. I've actually cooked my pasta separately because I'm not gonna serve it right away. So when I cook my pasta separately, I just stick, there's a little bit of water in the bottom, which I doubt you're even gonna be able to see move in the camera, but it's about this much and it just keeps the pasta from sticking together too much. So that's some of the prep work that I did ahead of time. And these vegetables are getting soft quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one off and cover it. And then I think she does a vegetable or chicken broth. So I have a vegetable sort of paste 
Then I just go ahead and scoop in. You can also obviously make your own vegetable broth or chicken broth. You can buy it. Uh, all good options, all tasty options. So once you're ready, this bean, oh, I always forget that that's there. This bean goes right in. And that's going to, again, give you this thicker aspect to your uh, to your sauce. And then this is tomato sauce. So a single batch would be one 15 ounce can or um, the Tetra packs are even better if you can get them or the glass, uh, but currently I have a can. And I need two of them because I'm doing a double batch. So just to say, this is a super tasty soup. Every time I serve it, you know, I have little ones that don't really like beans. At the time that uh, Gina had made this cookbook, she additionally had children that really struggled with beans. When they're pureed, the kids are none the wiser. And that is just a beautiful reality of stuff like that. So uh, when I make like a butternut cream sauce instead of maybe a dairy sauce, it's like a sauce of butternut squash. So good. So let me fill this up. Um, water. I'm going to need seven cups of broth to go in here. So here's my first four. And then if you want, you can just come right along with me to the side of the kitchen. This is more like the working clean up after you're done side. And then we come on back over here and go ahead and add that water in. And I, it's, it's supposed to be a teaspoon per cup when you're doing paste like this. Um, I'm amazing about not measuring that. I totally guess. So there's my guess. And it just goes right in. And then I'm done with that. The other thing that I'm going to add right now is all of these seasonings. So a single batch would be a tablespoon of parsley, a teaspoon of oregano, a teaspoon of basil, a half teaspoon of salt, and um, I just do shakes of pepper, so you gotta decide. Now this is a double batch of all those things, but that goes in in order to flavor it. And then like I said, I don't have a Parmesan rind, I'm just gonna add a wee bit of Parmesan in order to flavor that broth. Uh, if you are doing a dairy-free type thing, I would use nutritional yeast instead, and I have certainly done that, but this is not a very modified meal. Uh, one modification that is true, I'm using a bean pasta, a chickpea pasta. I have a gluten intolerance, so the little pastas that you saw in the picture, like it's so hard to find that in a gluten-free version, so I often just get whatever is on hand at the store and we move along. <laughs> but what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna allow this to come up to a little bit of a boil, I'm gonna let it boil for 15 minutes. I'll add my hamburger in. I'll give it another five minutes of boiling. And that's sort of where this one stood. And then when I bring this over to my friends, right, I'll actually end up just putting it in a couple of glass jars and I'll bring the pasta separately. Because if you put the pasta in and you're not ready to eat, it's just going to go ahead and seep like take all that juice from your soup. And you don't really want that. Where did I put my spatula? Here it is. So this is nice and thick, which when you first start uh, letting it boil, it's not gonna look that thick and you're gonna think, oh my gosh, I just have like this yucky, non-great broth. But it's gonna thicken up, don't even worry about it. And especially like if you consider that you're going to go ahead and add that pasta if you're gonna cook right away. But this one is not that thick yet, and so that can give you a little bit of a fright. But don't be afraid, it's gonna thicken for you and be a really nice consistency. So that is a little bit about the pasta e fagioli. I hope that you enjoy it. Certainly there are so many ways that you could change it up. You could leave a few beans, whole, like I said, you can add the meats. If you wanna go dairy free, you can do the nutritional yeast. Uh, you can do the fresh basil when you're cooking. That would be like a, its own fun thing to do. So lots of little modifications that you can do to make it fun. But it's not a lot of vegetables, I should tell you. I showed you the saute. 
One batch would be a stalk of celery, one carrot, and a half of an onion. So it, it and three cloves of garlic, right? So it's easy enough when you're doing a single batch. I just did a triple batch. It takes a little bit more effort, but super fast. And if you stick in the food processor and give it a few pulses, even faster. But if you are kind of OCD about the way your food looks, or you've just got some extra time on your hands, or it's like the one thing you can control in your life because you're on lockdown, then you can do it this other way and cut it up by hand. Anyways, enjoy it, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.